Hey everyone, and welcome back to Tech Talk Central. I'm Nathan, and today we're diving into a tech showdown that I know a lot of you have been grappling with. Ultra-wide versus dual monitors. Which setup reigns supreme? Well, to help us settle this debate once and for all, we've got the amazing Sarah here. Hey everyone, it's great to be back. And Nathan, you're right, this is a question that comes up all the time, and it's way more nuanced than just screen size. We're talking about your workflow, your gaming style, even your budget. Absolutely. So today we're going to break it all down. We're putting two specific monitors head to head. The Asus ROG Swift PG32 UCDP. Right. And the Asus Tough Gaming VG34 VQ3B. We'll be digging into the specs, user reviews, and everything in between so you can finally decide what truly matters most for your setup. Yeah, we're not just going to like list off features. We're going to explain why those specs matter, what they actually mean for you in the real world. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, we want you to walk away feeling like you can make an informed decision. So let's set the stage here. Oh. Ultra-wide versus dual monitors. Big picture, what are we talking about? All right, so ultra-wide monitors give you that immersive panoramic experience. It's like having one giant window into your digital world, while dual monitors, they're all about flexibility, having multiple windows and applications open side by side. Okay, I totally get the appeal of both, but like, how do you actually know which one is the right fit for you? Well, that's what we're here to figure out, right? It all boils down to your individual needs and priorities. Makes sense. All right, let's jump into our first contender. The Asus ROG Swift PG32 UCDP. This monitor is an absolute beast. 32 inches of 4K OLED goodness. And it has this crazy feature called dual mode switching, which lets you toggle between 4K at 240 hertz and FHD at a mind-blowing 480 hertz. Yeah, that dual mode switching can sound a little confusing at first, but basically think of it like having two monitors in one. You get insane detail for things like photo editing or single-player gaming in 4K. And then when you need that super smooth motion for competitive games, you can switch over to FHD. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. So I was checking out some user reviews for the PG32 UCDP, and people are raising about the colors and the realism. But I did see a few comments about the brightness and how the matte screen might affect the vibrancy. Can you shed some light on that? Sure. So OLED tech is famous for its incredible contrast. You get those really deep, inky blacks. But it can be a bit dimmer compared to some other display types. And that matte finish, while it's great for reducing glare, it can sometimes diffuse the light a little which might impact how vibrant those colors appear. So there's a bit of a trade-off there. Amazing visuals, but maybe not as bright as some other options. Exactly. That's why we're looking at all these trade-offs. No monitor is perfect for every single situation. So it's all about figuring out which strengths are most important to you. Okay, that makes sense. All right, let's move on to our second contender then, the Asus Tough Gaming VG34 VQ3B. So this one is a 34-inch ultra-wide QHD monitor with a 180 hertz refresh rate and a curved screen for that immersive feel. And chances are it's gonna be a bit more budget friendly than the ROG Swift. Yeah, this monitor is a multitasking beast. That ultra wide format gives you so much horizontal space to work with. Think spreadsheets, multiple documents, browser windows, all open at once without feeling cramped. Okay, so for our listeners out there who are, you know, prepping for presentations, mm. or working on complex projects, or maybe you just like to have all your information readily available. This sounds like a dream come true. Totally. But there is one thing to watch out for with ultra-wide monitors, mm. especially for gaming. If a game doesn't support that ultra-wide aspect ratio, you might end up with those black bars on the sides of the screen. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. But, you know, it's funny. I was reading a review where someone actually turned that into a positive. They were playing a horror game. And those black bars actually added to the creepy atmosphere, made the game even more immersive. You know what? That's a great example. How personal preference really comes into play here. What one person might see as a drawback, someone else might actually see as a bonus. Yeah, totally. All right. So we've looked at each monitor individually. Now it's time for the real showdown head to head. What are the key considerations and trade-offs? All right. Let's break it down based on what might be most important to you. First up, visuals. If pure image quality is your top priority, the OLED and the PG32 UCDP wins hands down. You get incredible contrast, deep blacks, and just stunning overall picture quality. But we were talking about that matte finish earlier. Doesn't that tone down the vibrancy a bit? It's true. It's a minor trade-off for reduced glare. Okay, so OLED takes the crown for visuals, but with a small caveat. 
What about gaming then? Which monitor has the edge there? This is where things get interesting. The PG32 UCDP's dual mode is a game changer. 4K at 240 hertz for stunning visuals and immersive games. And then bam, you can switch over to FHD at 480 hertz when you need that super smooth motion for competitive titles. Right, but wouldn't the VG34 VQ3B's ultra wide format and that curved screen, wouldn't that be more immersive for games that support it? Absolutely. If you primarily play games that are optimized for ultra wide, the VG34 VQ3B is going to give you a more enveloping and cinematic experience. So for gaming, it really depends on the types of games you play mm -hmm. and what you prioritize. Okay, what about productivity? I'm guessing dual monitors are still the undisputed champion for serious multitaskers. You're right. For true multitasking, with completely separate workspaces, dual monitors are still king. But don't underestimate the power of a single, well-utilized ultra-wide screen. That extra horizontal space on the VG34 VQ3B can be a game-changer for productivity, especially compared to a single standard size monitor. There's not a clear-cut victory for dual monitors anymore. That ultra-wide format is definitely giving them a run for their money. Okay, last but definitely not least, budget. Let's be realistic that OLED tech in the PG32 UCDP comes at a premium price. You're absolutely right. The VG34 VQ3B is going to be much easier on the wallet compared to the PG32 UCDP. All right, so we've got a pretty good picture of the pros and cons of each monitor. But before we wrap up, is there anything else our listeners should consider when making this decision? You know, one thing that's often overlooked is the physical space you have. Ultra-wides, especially the larger ones, they take up a significant amount of desk space. You also need a desk that's deep enough to accommodate that curve without feeling cramped. That's a great point. You don't want to buy this amazing monitor, only to realize it doesn't actually fit comfortably on your desk. All right, so we covered visuals, gaming productivity, and even budget. But there's one more piece of the puzzle we need to talk about. Ergonomics. Ergonomics. You mean like how comfortable it is to use? Exactly. A monitor might have all the bells and whistles, but if it's not comfortable to use for long periods, it's going to impact your productivity and even your health. That's a good point. What kind of ergonomic factors should people be thinking about? Well, with ultra-wide monitors, the biggest consideration is that curve. It's designed to be immersive. But if your desk isn't deep enough, you might find yourself leaning forward or straining your neck to see the edges of the screen. So deeper desk is a must-have for ultra-wides. Right. What about the PG32 UCDP? Any specific ergonomic considerations for that one? Not necessarily specific to that model. But it's important to remember that it's a 32-inch monitor. That's a lot of screen real estate. And you want to make sure it's positioned at the right height and distance to avoid eye strain and neck pain. Okay, so ergonomics are crucial. Anything else we haven't covered yet? Well, we've talked about the monitor itself, but what about the rest of your setup? Do you have a powerful enough graphics card to drive those high resolutions and refresh rates? Do you need extra cables or adapters? These are all things to think about before you hit that buy button. Those are some great practical considerations. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of a new monitor. And forget about the little things. Speaking of little things, let's talk about those user reviews again. Was yeah. there anything that stood out to you, Sarah? One thing I noticed with the PG32 UCDT reviews was that some users mentioned something called OLED burn-in. OLED burn-in, I've heard of that. It has something to do with the OLED technology, right? <gasps> yes. OLED screens are made up of tiny organic light emitting diodes, and over time those diodes can start to degrade, especially if they're displaying the same static image for extended periods. This can result in a ghost image, or burn-in effect, that's permanently visible on the screen. Oh wow, that sounds a little scary. Is that something people should be worried about with the PG Thummy 2 UCDP? It's definitely something to be aware of, especially if you're planning on using the monitor for tasks that involve a lot of static content like word processing or spreadsheets. However, burn-in is less of an issue with modern OLED panels, and there are things you can do to mitigate the risk, like using a screensaver or varying the content you display. Okay, so it's potential concern, but not necessarily a deal breaker. What about the VG34 VQ3B? Any red flags in those reviews? Not really. The reviews for the VG34 VQ3B are generally very positive. Some users mention that the curve takes a little getting used to. But that's to be expected with any curved monitor. It's like switching from a flat screen TV to a curved one. It takes a little time for your brain to adjust. Exactly. Overall, the VG34 VQ3B seems to be a solid choice for both productivity and gaming, especially if you're looking for that immersive, ultra-wide experience without breaking the bank. All right, so we've covered a lot of ground here. We talked about visuals, gaming, productivity, ergonomics. 
even potential downsides like OLED burn-in. Hmm. But at the end of the day, Sarah, which monitor would you choose? Oh, that's a tough one. If I had to pick just one, I think I'd go with the... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to answer that. Wait, what? Why not? Because the whole point of this deep dive is to help you, the listener, make the best decision for your needs. I don't want to sway you one way or the other. I want you to take all the information we've discussed, weigh the pros and cons, and figure out which monitor truly aligns with your priorities and your budget. That's a really good point. We've given you all the tools. Now it's time to go forth and make an informed decision. So we've got the Powerhouse PG32 UCDP for those who demand the absolute best visuals and gaming performance. And then we've got the Workhorse VT34 VQ3B for productivity ninjas and budget conscious gamers. I think we've covered pretty much everything, right? Almost. There's one last thing I want to leave our listeners with. You know, we've talked a lot about the technical specs, the pros and cons, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, the best monitor for you is the one that fits your lifestyle and enhances your digital experience. I love that. It's not just about the specs. It's about how the monitor makes you feel when you're mm -hmm. using it. Exactly. Do you want to be enveloped in that immersive ultra-wide world? Or do you prefer the flexibility and command center vibe of a dual monitor setup? It's a personal choice. There's no right or wrong answer. So it's not about finding the quote unquote best monitor. It's about finding the best monitor for you. Well said, Sarah. Thank you. Well, folks, I think that about wraps up our deep dive into the world of ultra wide versus dual monitors. Hopefully you're feeling a bit more informed and confident about making the right decision for your needs. And if you're still on the fence about which monitor is right for you, be sure to check out the links in the description below. You'll find the latest prices and deals on both the PG32 UCDP and the VG34 VQ3B. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Tech Talk Central for more deep dives into the tech that matters to you. Until next time.